I don't really like doing full finishes on an exterior of a property, but. I've never seen a full finish I actually like. We'll see what I think of this one. Hey, I'm Ty, and in this episode, we're looking at the DIY Network TV show, Restored. <laughs> I'm Brett Waterman. Preservation is my passion. I love saving historic homes. It's kind of sad to see something get really kind of run down. This is horrible. Every time we dig a little deeper, we get all these little clues. I love it. Woo! It's my job to return a home to the way it was intended to be. Woo! I love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it looks like a whole new house. This is restored. In these reviews, what we do is we look at TV shows that claim somewhere in the title, in the episode, or in the description that they restore or that they're doing restoration. What we ask ourselves is, are they actually doing restoration? Are they restoring anything? So let's get started watching Restored from DIY Network. Join Rebecca's Arts and Crafts home was built in 1913. At only 1,300 square feet, it's classed as a bungalow with three bedrooms and one bathroom. And clearly, one of these bedrooms is gonna be a nursery, and soon. You must spend a ton of time out here on the porch. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. We, it. we actually spent a lot of time rebuilding the porch. Wow, it's a really great craftsman bungalow. It, probably some of my biggest focus is going to be taking a look at the brickwork. And what's interesting is that you've got a combination of both the clinker brick and which was considered. Really like how this episode is going, how they're informing about the different material types as we go on. Work on this. I just don't want to see a consistent painted material. It needs to have variation in it so it feels more natural. That door sticks a little bit. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. <laughs> wow. Really great bungalow. I can see why you guys bought it. Yeah. Great living room, beautiful space. It's, everything's just been painted. Yeah. Right. Someone was clearly fighting the arts and crafts. Yeah. We want to embrace it. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Yeah. Bring it all back, yeah, natural exactly. woods and more natural colors. Yeah, the beams up here, I mean, if those were stripped, I mean, restored back to the yeah. original. It would just be awesome. Talk to me about lighting in the rooms. What, what do you, where do you want to achieve in regards to the lighting? Uh, we just want more lighting everywhere. I have an eye condition where it's hard for me to see in dim places. As you can see, it's super dim in here, so it's hard for me to get around. So if there's better lighting, if there's more lighting spread out, it would just help me get around the house a lot easier. Okay. This is a common problem that most people have with lighting in their home. I'm really excited to find out how they resolve it. This is a... I don't know, a third bedroom, maybe a parlor? Not so sure about it. I would probably call this the study. Oh, and you have pocket doors. Oh, yeah. Ah, pocket love doors. pocket doors. Hey, at least they're working. <laughs> a little bit. Kinda. Let me do that one more time. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sounds like an old house. Yeah. All right. I love how open the floor plan is. The dining room's really big. massive. I just want to note that real quick. Brett here says, I love how open the floor plan is. There's this misconception that every time you renovate an old house, you've got to blow it open to give it that open floor plan, that open concept. But there are so many options when you're looking to purchase a home, if you're wanting that open concept that you can get in an old home. Many homes have an open concept. I like it, I love the cabinet. I can't believe it's still here. I, so often I see these ripped out. Mm -hmm. We're really lucky to have this. I mean, yeah. this is just fantastic. I mean, if it were finished or stripped or whatever, I mean, it could really pop in here. Oh, the kitchen, okay. What else we want to talk about? One of the things I'm already thinking about as I'm watching this, they keep talking about stripping it down. I'm wanting to see, do they actually strip this wood down and refinish it? That's a really, really labor intensive thing to do. I gotta open up that wall. I'm gonna take that door off. We're gonna take out the lower cabinets for sure. I'm really excited to see here that nobody has got a major sledgehammer out. So it doesn't look like they're just tearing stuff up for, to tear it up. Uh, they've got their tools out and of course, yeah, they're demoing, but they're demoing in a safe way. Uh, I do see some mask and some, and some protective eyewear. That's also a really good sign. So I do like what I'm seeing as far as how they're doing the demo here. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's see what we get. So now we're demoing a wall. He's got eye protection. He's got his mask on. 
Typical lath and plaster. Got his floor covered really well. That's smart. I didn't know if I was going to get like a six inch thick wall in here with some chases or ducting. Everything looks really clean. I love it when a plan works out. I like it. That works. Enjoying Rebecca's house, the dark wood, which is a classic arts and crafts feature, has been hidden for years under layers of paint. Oh, I love it. I love it. Details, guys, really just kind of feel your way through. They are, they are stripping paint using a heat method, a heat gun, and what looks like to be a putty knife. Now I'm connecting the house back to its roots. I can clearly see the beam lights, and you can see the square right where they are. Well, that means I got to get Mike, my electrician, in here right away because I got to figure out the wiring on this because I'm putting those beam lights back in. That's going to be awesome. Rebecca wants the room to have as much light as possible, so reinstating these lights will make a huge difference. Mike, hey, hey bud. bud, how we doing? Good man. You ready to take a look at some electrical? Yeah. Big discovery. There were beam lights. You can see it on all four of them. Oh, yeah. And there was a center light here. They distributed the lighting in the room, which works so well, because Rebecca's got this kind of optical issue. It's a medical issue. She doesn't have a lot of peripheral, and she needs light. And her whole thing to me is they had one lighting fixture in here. And she said it's kind of dark at night. And they're addressing the way to fix it way back when. It's kind of cool. But I can tell you right now, you've got knob and tube. I always love that, you know, when you are in an old house and you've got a modern problem, not enough lighting, and you find that actually that problem was solved 100 years ago and somebody with the best of intention, of course, covered up your solution. So this is really great that he's going to be able to reutilize that historic placement of lighting, which is going to maintain that historic character, but also solve this homeowner's needs. Can you check to see if they're live? Yeah, yeah, let's check and see what it is because I'd like to reinstall the beam lights. Oh, look at that. Are you, are you telling me I've got live wire? Yep, it was working from this switch right here. Let me see that. All right, here. Two, let me stand over here. Nothing right now. Hold on. There you go. Turn it off. We've got live electrical buried up here. Can we still use it? That stuff is really dangerous. Whatever we touch, we have to replace. We are. Wow, you know, uh, it is really great that these uh, lights are still here in the beams, but it really does bring up an important thing that when you're renovating an old house and you have knob and tube, really when you're renovating any old house and you're dealing with the electrical part, there are so many different things that you can DIY. Don't DIY the electrical. Hire a professional licensed electrician that's gonna get a permit, that's gonna do it the right way. With the lighting safety issue now fixed, it's back to paint stripping, which is taking way longer than I thought. I've been really excited to take a stab at this door. The first time I walked up here, I recognized it as an original arts and, arts and crafts door. It's a beautiful, beautiful door. Divided lights right here. Beautiful One, beveled two, glass. Shape. You definitely want to save Getting that. Getting this off and bringing back all the natural wood is going to be a key factor and reestablishing stripping and doors of house. old paint is a lot of work. Boy, this baby's really been through it. Whew! That's gonna be really pretty. Really nice, clear dug fur door. A lot of work here, but it'll be worth it. Most people hate stripping paint, but I love it because it reveals what's hidden underneath. Now let's talk really quickly about the method that Brett is using here to restore this beautiful craftsman door. He is using a heat method. Specifically, he is using a heat gun with a little small scraping knife. Now let's talk, heat gun is a really popular way to restore historic millwork. There's so many people that you see using it and can be a great tool, but there are some things that you need to think about when using a heat gun. The first is that the way that the heat gun disperses heat. The heat gun disperses heat in a cone. It spreads out, it just kind of goes everywhere. So when you're using that gun and you have it resting on something, you've gotta be thinking about where else is that heat getting and what else could it damage 
while it's doing that. The big thing is, as I pointed out, this has some beautiful beveled glass there in that door. And when you're using this for maybe like a window to get that old glazing off, you really have to think about where else is that heat going? Because if that heat is going and it can get on the window, on the glass itself, it can actually, the heat of course will break the glass and it will damage beautiful wavy glass, beautiful leaded glass, beautiful, beveled glass and this house has all of it and and i know brett as well as myself would not want to see this you have to be really really careful to protect that glass the second thing you've got to consider is that heat gun is going to heat really really hot of course it's heating that paint layer up it's making it bubble making it soft heating the oils up inside of it so you can scrape it off with your knife well it can heat really hot and char and even burn the wood. And when he's wanting to go with that natural finish, if you char the wood, that's gonna make it really difficult. And of course, then you have to consider charring the wood could lead to a fire. So you wanna really pay attention. The last thing we wanna talk about here with the heat gun is the safety. You know, when you're working an old house, if you've watched our videos, you know we're concerned about lead-based paint. Most houses built before 1978, there's a high likelihood that they do, and you wanna make sure when you're working on a house, if you've hired a contractor, they're a certified renovator. And what a certified renovator will know is that when you heat lead up, when you heat lead-based paint up, it actually turns that lead-based paint into fumes. And those fumes can be very, very poisonous. Lead is really harmful to children and pets, but can, but can also be deadly in its fume version to adults. And so I'm really happy to see that he is using this here and he is obviously a professional. He has got a P100 mask on, the mask with the respirators. He's wearing a P100 mask and that is helping him protect himself from those lead-based fumes that could be created while using that heat gun. Stripping, peeling paint. Yeah, with this house, it goes on and on. And I saved them all. It does go on and on and on when you're stripping old paint, but there is a faster and easier way. Stick with me all the way through the end when we get past the reveal of what this house ends up looking like, and I will share with you a way to strip paint that is so much faster and actually more safe than using a heat gun. And I've saved the most difficult area for last, that exterior brick wall. I'm gonna try a little heat gun first just to see what I may be able to get off. I have a feeling I'm gonna to have to use some chemicals to pull off whatever residual paint I can get, but I'm not feeling really optimistic about this. Wow, that's definitely not what I thought I was gonna find. Under the paint is the original red brick, but it's got a protective glaze. I am breaking through that right now, trying to get the paint off. If I keep going and I leave that raw, this brick will start deteriorating. It's one of the worst things you can do. The reality is I'm not gonna be able to remove the paint because I'm gonna be causing more harm to the brick. Let's take a pause right here and talk about painted brick. What he's facing here is actually uh, an unfortunate thing that many people face when trying to renovate and restore their houses that have had their brick painted. A lot, most brick is not designed to be painted. Brick is really porous and when it is painted, you actually will block in and it will hold the moisture and it will cause it to fail prematurely. In addition to that, the paint can really hold on to the brick and so that when you do go to try to restore it like he's doing there, you're actually gonna take the face of the brick off and it can really, really damage the brick. It is one of those things, we're doing restoration, when we're doing a renovation on an old house, we wanna do things that are reversible, that somebody, if they ever wanted to, could come back and put it back the way that it was. And when you paint brick, you're pretty much permanently making that surface have to be painted from this point forever. And he's showing you how complicated that's gonna be. So he's trying to restore that curb appeal of that home, trying to give it that historic look, trying to restore those historic elements. This is gonna be really difficult and I'd like to see, and I'm really excited to see maybe what he's gonna do. I always like to find out the history of a house when I'm doing a restoration. 
Today, my friend Jennifer, who works with the Riverside Historical Society, has come by to share some really interesting news. Well, the In the last episode, when we reviewed Good Bones, which you can check out uh, right here, they actually ran into where they had a bunch of additional cost because of they changed the renovation, working through their local uh, permitting or historic preservation. I don't know which one, but they had some issues. What you'll see here is that he's actually being proactive. Working with your local HP, your historic, your local historic preservation office from the front end, uh, you know, and the planning stages is always going to be much more cost effective. It's going to save you a ton of time. It's going to make sure you get that house right. One of the reasons why people end up spending a lot of money on an old house is because they did things that weren't necessarily going to get approved. Always want to ask for permission because you never want to be in a position where you're begging for forgiveness. Another thing I want to check is the progress of Maisie's new nursery. Oh, doggy. I like it. Doorway right through. Nice case opening. Wow. It's kind of odd to think that this used to be the door to the bedroom. And now, that's the closet door. And one of the best things that we got out of the whole reconfiguration is Joey and Rebecca's bedroom is right next door. Before, they had to go all the way around through the hallway, through the dining room, to the kitchen to get into this space. Now, they just go right there. Pretty cool. Baby's crying, easy access right here. That's good planning. When you're renovating an old house, it is really common for for you to want to just gut everything. But when you're working on, when you're using your head and you're making a smart plan, there are ways to achieve your goals without going through all the costs and all the expense and all the destruction of a full on gut. He has improved the functionality of this house by adding a short wall and opening up a small wall for a door. What a cost effective, simple solution. Standing outside with all that sanding, you think I got a beehive over me. But I know they're busy as bees in there getting that wood finished. With the structural work on the inside looking good, I've got a tricky task of finishing the exterior brick wall. As much as I've tried, I haven't been able to remove the paint from the brick. So I'm gonna test a paint finish that makes it look like the original brick. Those are the colors that I'm trying to try to pull forward. You can see my brick has a little bit of an oranges and a little bit of a dark red and a little bit of brown. I'm gonna try to pull some of that look to the front of the house because that's what this brick was. I don't really like doing full finishes on an exterior of a property, but achieving the original- I am a little nervous. I technically have I'm the property. I've never seen a full finish I actually like. We'll see what I think of this one. Well, that is a lot of work, but I think it's less work than stripping the paint on that. Real quick question, have you ever done a faux finish on the exterior of a historic or old home? I would like to know what your results are. I've never done something like this. I'm really impressed by it, but I've never done it myself. So if you have an experience with that, I would love to hear what that is in the comments below. Any information you have, whether you have an article about it, some research done on it, or you've done it yourself, leave it in the comments below, share it with our community so that we all can learn and grow and see if this process that he's doing here is actually practical when doing an old home restoration. I wanna encourage you, before we do the big reveal and we see how Brett and his team finish this project, I wanna encourage you to support our mission of restoring old houses and getting old houses right by subscribing our, to our channel and clicking the bell to get notified whenever we put out new content. We put out new content like this all the time. And it's not just reviews where we hope to encourage you, inspire you to get your house right, but we put out how-tos that we have learned working on hundreds of historic homes. I'm really excited to see how he finishes this up. So let's find out how this one ends up and did they actually restore on Restored. Are you ready for this? Yeah, oh really my excited. gosh, we're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you too. Here's your new house all from right. 1913. Okay. Take a look. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so pretty. crazy. What did you do? What do you think, hon? I love it. <laughs> oh, my 
<laughs> Honey, it's, oh my it's just Brad, yeah. you're incredible, dude. 1913 Craftsman Bungalow. <laughs> wow. This think, is a restoration. <laughs> the character defining details have all been maintained and even better than that, they've been enhanced by returning some of those features to the original natural millwork finish. I am really, really blown away. I didn't expect to find this on TV. Restored has actually lived up to its name. How'd you get this brick like this? That was a lot of work, right? Look at this door. I mean, this is wow, big red door. that oh, door God. is beautiful. That red is gone. Yeah. The wood is you're back. Let me tell you, wood is, is beautiful. I really want to encourage you out there, if you're yeah. thinking of renovating your new old home, bring the wood back. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and it's actually unique. You know, before the house, the, the house was that typical boring white blah colors no real difference just just blah like a like a it's like a hospital like just white and boring and i see that happening everywhere where everything's gone white and everything's gone boring but this house they brought back the character they brought back that that natural finished wood that just makes it pop when it's finished like this this is it looks so good I don't know if it's excitement or what it is, but it feels like warm in here. It's like excitement. Or Those windows are beautiful, by the way. It's like, my goodness. Was all white. Losing all, everything was painted white. Everything was painted white. That's sterile. Tell them, Brett. That sterile feeling is gone. That sterile feeling is gone. I mean, the beans. I think. Really I think I'm in love. Look into your study. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What do you think? This it is looks great. So pretty. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Man, study looks great. The wood finish is great. I just can't stop talking about it. There's more than anything else in this restoration. It was about finishes. Wow. One of the few people I've ever he heard use the word restoration, and he's actually talking about the right thing. This was restored. That door was restored. <laughs> Look at the grain. Look at the grain on that wood. Beautiful. They're beautiful. So get rid of your farmhouse ideas and let's bring that wood finished craftsman back. I cannot believe this is the same wood that was here before. Yeah, right? It looks like you just took off the old one and put a new one on. No, that is all the original wood and I have the fingernails to prove it. <laughs> and it works, it opens and closes. Yes, everything opens and works. Been a lot of movement in the house, 100 plus years and yeah. some stuff, but we got the cabinets to the point where they work. Go enjoy your oh, kitchen. My gosh. <laughs> this is This incredible. is so beautiful. <laughs> Great looking kitchen. I love the way they reuse those upper cabinets. I'm not a huge fan of the different types of cabinets that they use, but it still looks so great. The restoration of Joey and Rebecca's Arts and Crafts Bungalow came in right on budget at $62,000. So they talk about the restoration of this project came in right on budget at $62,000. Now that does, that is a major restoration and that's a major renovation and they did the whole kitchen and utility room in that budget. Now this is why restoration can make so much sense. This house has been drastically improved. The kitchen, the layout, the uh, that laundry room, all of it has been improved and has been improved on time and on budget. And why is that? Well, that is because they actually did restoration. If they would have gone with the full gut program, strip it, gut it, they would have spent thousands of dollars more, very more, most likely almost a hundred thousand or more dollars. Restoration is so smart and that's what makes this a rescue. You know, the hardest thing that Brett kept talking about throughout all of this was how hard it is to restore that historic millwork to get all that paint off. And the problem that Brett was having was that he was using the wrong tool. So if you want to find out what the right tool to use to get all of your historic millwork off, to do it in a safe way, and to do it in a way that is so much faster than the heat gun, check this video out right here where I demonstrate how to use the speed heater, the best tool to remove all of that old paint.